Hello, I'm Nathaniel. Nathaniel. No, so you make three specific arguments for the existence of God: a creative argument, an argument for design, and an argument for morality. I already like this guy. I first off would like to try and take down the argument on morality. Go ahead. Because it's not an actually an argument for the existence of a god; it's the argument for the fact that we should have an idea of an existence of a god. <laughs> because otherwise there would be no moral basis from which we could sit on. And I disagree with that because I feel that humans are inherently altruistic and moral. Okay, all right, st stop there for just a second, Nathaniel. What do you mean by altruistic and moral? We are giving and we care about each other. Why is that good? Why is that good? Because it helps our species survive. Why is it good to survive? Because then we can propagate and move on as a species and continue to exist. So why is that a good thing? Who said? Why is that a good thing? Yeah. Because that is what it is. Well, that's an is. That's not an ought, though. Stalin would say, fine, Nathaniel. I'm going to survive by killing you and taking your stuff. Why is he wrong? Because Stalin would have the initial urge not to. He would feel that the inherent urge of humans is to be caring for one another. There are situations where humans will not be caring about one another, and those are exceptional. But because humans are inherently altruistic, his first urge would be to take care of the person or try and help them. But if he has some motivation against that, then he would no longer have that urge. And he would decide that he wants to kill them because he has a reason to. Well, again, you're, I think you're begging the question as to what altruism is. Why is taking care of others a good thing if there is no God? That's your opinion. Is there an external referent, an authoritative, unchanging referent that you're getting that opinion from, which makes it objective, or is it just something you feel? Humans, um, so if you take it from the stance that this is something that is consistent throughout humanity, that we care about one another, then we could s superpose that as a moral impulse that we have. Okay, let me agree with you. I think we do have a moral impulse. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what C.S. Lewis said in The Abolition of Man, when he looked at all the diverse cultures and he said, they agree on basic morality. Now, how do you explain that basic morality? Well, there's maybe different ways to explain it, but some will say that's because God has written it on our hearts. But the issue isn't how we know it. The issue is why is altruism, as you put it, or caring for one another a good thing? Who said? It's not necessarily that who said, it is what is. We are altruistic. There is no need for someone to say that it is a good thing. It is what we are. But if Hitler or Stalin comes along and says, I don't want to be altruistic, I want to be selfish and take everything for myself, and if I have to kill you to do that, I'm going to do that, why is that objectively wrong? Because he is not taking care of other people. Who said it's... Where are you getting this standard to objective, this objective standard that you ought to take care of people? Where does that come from if there's no God? So I'm just going to talk about a little example that I know of and some others. So um, there's three different points I'd like to make. First off, we still exist. If we did not take care of each other as, as a social species, we would have very, very limited capabilities of still existing. We need to band together. We need to take care of each other. We need to be friendly to That's one another. That's presupposing that survival is a good thing. Why is it a good thing? And why us surviving? Why not roaches? Or antelope? Or black widow spiders? Why do you need the concept of good there? We're still surviving and we're being nice kind to each other. We are being caring for one another. Is, wouldn't... Forgive me, Nathaniel, but you're stealing the standard of goodness from God's universe to try and make your worldview work. But if mm -hmm. there is no objective, authoritative, moral standard beyond us, then atheism doesn't work. You know, I think you're right. There is something to that. The, the idea of good and evil 
is in a lot of ways a religious concept. This is such a rare and beautiful moment of cognitive dissonance giving way to actual thought. And you can see his gears turning in this moment as he realizes that the idea of good and evil is, as he puts it, a religious construct. But if that's true, then so are the ideas that he's putting forth about kindness and altruism. He's realizing in this moment that his assumptions are actually predicated and, and actually require there to be some sort of an objective reality that exists outside of any individual's interpretation or any society's implementation. You can see him realizing in this moment that the second that you acknowledge objective morality that is, again, above and beyond culture or society, you're also acknowledging the idea of a, of a moral law giver. And as you acknowledge that, you're, you're acknowledging the idea of God himself. This is why the moral argument is so compelling. And I love that you see it landing home in this moment. That being said, let's go ahead and continue. But why do we need that? Well, it depends on what you mean by religion. I'm just talking, you can leave religion out of it. It's a loaded term. Let's just say the source, ontologically, which means the study of being. Where does morality come from? Are you an atheist? Yes. Okay, are you a materialist? No. Okay, so you believe in immaterial reality. That's good. How do you explain immaterial reality if there is no God? Could you define immaterial reality? Oh, let's just take the laws of morality. It's right to take care of people. It's right to love. It's wrong to murder. Where does that come from? That's something that is ingrained in us in our behaviors. That's how we know it. And, and let me... Let me agree with you that maybe there are different ways we can come to know it. If evolution is true, maybe evolution has helped bring it to us. Maybe our parents taught it to us. Maybe society taught it to us. However, my question isn't how we know it. My question is, why is it right to love and wrong to murder objectively? Because, you know, we went to the Nazis and they said, oh, we're just obeying our government. And we said, you had a higher, you had a higher obligation to obey the good rather than your government, and you failed, so you're guilty. So where does this higher standard come? Where, where does it come from? What is it ontologically? So to some extent, this is an interpretation of, and I'm probably going to screw this up, but this is an interpretation of why we exist. And so we come from a long lineage of life, and so... In order to honor that, we must continue to live. And so to be kind is to honor that life that we have. And life is all that we have. Okay, okay. I, I agree with what you're saying here, but you're importing terms, moral terms, like honor and good into an atheistic right. system that right. has no way to ground those moral terms. That's my point. Let me ask you another question. I'm going to ask you the question I said I would ask you. If Christianity were true, would you become a Christian? Yes. Great. If I give you a book, would you read it? I'm a busy person. <laughs> <laughs> but if you give it to me, I would take a look. You'll take a look. If you read it, I'll give it to you. It doesn't seem like you're that interested in it. If you give me your email, I'll tell you that I read it. You'll, you'll, you'll tell me what? I'll tell you that I, what I read about it and what I thought about it. Oh, that's fine. I'll give you my email as long as you read it. All right. All right. Done. Oh, that's so funny. I, I love, I love the you. ending to that. I love the respect that was given and received on both sides. I really, really like this young guy. And I think that he probably will end up arriving at a at a understanding that his current worldview at the time of the recording of this video is literally borrowing all of its suppositions from the Christian worldview. So this is what Frank Turek was referencing in the video. He didn't use this term, but what it, what he's talking about is the Nuremberg trials at the end of World War II when, you know, the 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 nations of the world got together and they determined that the behavior of the Nazis was wrong, even though that society had agreed that it was right. And by the way, Hitler was influenced by atheistic thought. Hitler was influenced by Darwinian thought. Hitler literally believed that he was doing what he was doing for the flourishing of human species. So from a from a pure evolutionary biological perspective, the the Holocaust 
how how can you really argue that it's wrong if if he if the society agreed that it was right in, in mass and if it actually was theoretically according to his worldview something that was actually good for the preservation of of the species and the bringing about of the ubermensch as he said the superman um, all of that kind of flies within an atheistic structure. It's only when, as the people within the Nuremberg trials decided, they said, wait a second, this is wrong. Even though Germany, even the Nazi party believed that it was right, they were wrong. How do you make that determination? You have to measure it against this ultimate opt, this moral standard that exists above and beyond the standard of any particular nation or culture or civilization. All that being said, really like the kid and like the conversation as well. I hope you guys did also. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, all the things that tell YouTube that you guys like this content. I hope that you did and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks. Bye.